Propitiation means how God sees us. That's what propitiation means. Not appeasement. So there's a lot of Afrikaans. What's Afrikaans word? Persoonan. There's a lot of these ideas. Because it comes out of actually the Greek understanding of what that might mean. And it was a Greek word. But the Hebrews' understanding of what it means is not appeasement. It's included in that which is acceptable. And so propitiation means how God sees us. So when you read it, He came to make propitiation or to be our propitiation, then He came to be the one in whom we are included and seen by God. He came to be the mercy seat, what God sees when He looks at us. So, heaven and earth were created to host these intentions of God. Hey, it's a slim God. Very, very, very clever. He didn't just stumble along and say, I'll make it up as it goes. No, no, no. He designed perfect design. The plans of God are perfect. The ways of God are perfect, righteous in all His ways, perfect in all His ways. He came up with a perfect plan by which you will be seen as perfect, being included in the one who is perfect, who becomes our propitiation, who becomes the mercy seat who becomes the one in whom we are included and seen by God. Now you are the righteousness of God in Christ. And the Lord, may the Holy Spirit make these things clearer and clearer and clearer to your spirit. That even as we seek the Lord, even as we seek His ways, as it says in Malachi 3 verse 1, the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to His temple. And even as we seek and say, Lord, we want to know Your ways, we want to understand Your ways, that You, co you, you, you come to Your church, You come to Your body, make Yourself known in and through Your body, in an incredible way. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Peter. I must just say, you did mention last week, I think, only 20% uh, of what is spoken about in a lesson or a teaching can be um, absorbed. So, I have 20% chance of being correct at, at best. <laughs> um, okay. Um, but I think most of you, I think uh, when Pastor Peter put me on the spot just before he gave his message, um, asked me, what does it mean to be saved? Um, and how would I explain that to someone? And I immediately went back to, well, what does it say in the beginning? And Pastor Peter, actually not many of you, I think, I hope most of you know, uh, he spoke mainly about Ephesians 1 and 2, I think, uh, before the foundations of the, of the earth, um, God predestined us uh, for adoption as sons. And from that, uh, my mother actually pointed out now, you don't need to do tirlantankis and this and that to be saved. Um, by grace, you have been saved. That not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So we can't do anything. We can't say sorry. We can't go on and hope to please God or appease God in any way. Uh, we have already been. God has given us that gift of, um, of eternal life, as they call it, in, in the old season. But what, so what is it that if somebody asks me, what is it that you need to do to be saved? 
I think you need to acknowledge that God has already done all of this for you and is predestined you to adoption. And I think I also want to do a dance around here, Pastor Peter, because it's the... No, 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 no. We, won't, we won't show it here. <laughs> it's what I feel in my spirit, not, not in the flesh. Um, but it's to maybe try and... It's all in my head. I can't really convey it properly, but you are predestined for adoption as a son of the Most High God before He created anything. And actually, to this end, we were created to be that standard, to represent this great God, this Spirit that we'll never be able to wrap our minds around. He chose us before the foundations of the world to be that representation. And to be saved, at least in my interpretation, is to give up that right to do things by yourself and say, I accept that which God has predestined for my life, this design that He has created me to live according to. And yes, the world is very appealing and appeals to every single ounce of your flesh and your desires, but I give up that right and I trust God that that which He has created me for is far greater than anything this world can offer. And knowing that He's already provided it, I choose to come under, I choose to repent, to change my way of thinking, to completely wrap myself under this authority of God. And as a son, I have a duty to reflect my Father's image. I'm a part of a household that requires me, as Pastor Peter would say, to uphold the culture and the standard of that house. And that means coming out of your old ways, though they might appeal to certain aspects of your flesh, coming out of that, coming under the authority of God, and letting Him form in you that which was predestined long before He even created the earth. So that is my interpretation, Pastor Peter. Whether I've passed or not, we'll, we'll leave to you. The son of the house. The son of the house.